Hello everyone! The other day I was asked to make a live how to berserker guide for the For Honor Trials and Dojo Discord, a very cool server that helps players improve at a game. They have a lot of organized events such as screaming with coaches, live guides with competitive players just like this one, organized tournaments for tier 2 players and overall a competitive friendly welcoming environment. If you're interested in competitive For Honor, they are the best place to start. Link in the description. Anyhow, you should know that this video is unscripted. Except for some little notes I had, it's just me rambling about Berserker, specifically what he is good and bad at, what playstyle you should have, what to do in certain scenarios like anti-ganking, duels, ganking, etc. I am sure everyone here can learn something new today, so without further ado, let's get into it. First, I'll start with pros and cons about Berserker. Uh, what, what is he good at? What is he bad at? So you get a better understanding of the character. Also, I'd like to mention that uh, with this guide, I'm already assuming that the OS changes are in place since they're coming next Thursday. So uh, we'll, we'll just try to theorize how it's going to be with OS changes. But uh, as you can obviously assume, he's going to be much better after option selects get removed. So yeah, let's start with the pros and cons. First of all, the best thing you're gonna notice about Berserker, first thing you pick him up, is that he's an amazing 1v1. Probably one of the best. And one thing that is very important and uh, matters a lot in Dominion is that he can kill extremely fast. He has a very good time to kill. Especially, especially if his offense is going his way, you can absolutely destroy someone in like 10, 20 seconds. Second thing that is very good at and is very important in the meta is that he has very good chase, meaning that his enemies cannot run away as easily. It's always appreciated to have very good chase, especially because not a lot of characters in the game have good chase. So whenever a character has, he's gonna stand out. Uh, he's one of the best anti -gang. Sorry. No, I'm just saying to blitz. I'm gonna try and demonstrate some of the things you're talking about. Oh. Doing them. Right, he's uh, he's one of the best anti gankers. So, so another thing that he's uh, known for, he's like very flashy. A lot of YouTubers play him to anti gank. So, yeah, he has also there are like two type of anti gankers. There's like the anti ganker that can stall a lot. Uh, for example, warlord. Like warlord, yes, he's he can. It's very hard to kill him. But if he gets revenge, you cannot really do much. You cannot really kill people because of your headbutt. They can GP you and you get into recoveries. No, Berserker is different. Berserker is an anti-ganker that has big potential to kill enemies in revenge. Like once you get a revenge, you can actually uh, do a lot, a lot of damage. Another pros, pro he has is that he has a makeshift gank that uh, is not is not so powerful, but it's better than nothing. It's he has another ability in his tool set. Uh, it's especially one good. One second, you saying it's very bad quality on Twitch. Um, Litz, would you prefer trying to stream? Is it my is it my Discord stream or is it the Twitch setting off that's bad? Uh, I can try to I can try yeah, to stream, yeah. but I, my CPU might be able to it might mess up. I'll try it though. And it's, it's actually somewhat alright. So is it okay. Think... Which ones is it good on? Let me let me check it. Let, yes. on. let me move this to my second monitor. That's fine. We're not gonna try anything. Also, All right. Sorry, Blitz. Uh, no, no, it's not you, Timo. <laughs> no, it's not Timo this time. Yeah, uh, people are saying it's uh, it's it's fine. Reset for the two, so I'll. Okay, well, I'll keep on streaming my viewpoint anyway, so you can switch it back and forth if you want to. I'm, um, I'm gonna stay to stun. I'm, uh, stay with stun. I'm not gonna try anything out right now. All right. Um, yeah, you continue, please. Okay. Sorry. Right. Please, please carry on, Barrett. Thank you. Uh, I was talking about his makeshift gang. And he said it's not so powerful, but can come useful from time to time. And you the, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, I will talk more about it later, though. But you can show it right now if you want. So and that is the gang. The second part is a bit uh, improvised, but the important part is that if a damage GPs, you can zone. You get full damage on the zone. There's no damage reduction and. Uh, of that zone, you have enough hit stun for your teammate to get another heavy. 
And as you can see, afterwards you can improvise, you can go for a second heavy and you can try to confirm it somehow. I try to confirm it if I like. Right, moving on. He has hyper armor, which allows you to trade in team fights. It's, uh, it's very important. It's very good that he has hyper armor. You'll see a lot of characters with hyper armor can just be a bit more forgiving in team fights. Like you can attack and not really know what you're doing and still do damage and trade. But it's also very risky and I will get into that later has an amazing deflect that has very good legend potential definitely not to be underestimated like uh, I said this a lot of times but I think Berserker is uh, one of the better ledgers in the game probably like even in top 5 throwing a top heavy blitz in front of the lesser. yeah as you can see it gets a GB and with a GB you can throw people he has a very good tier 3 and tier 4 that synergizes well with other feats as well he has good dodge attack that uh, can be unlocked slash target swapped. And another good thing that he has going, uh, which is a bit special, is that he has a very good stamina pool. He has, if I'm correct, 160 or 140, no, 160 stamina, I think. Am I correct, Spanner? Um, I can't remember, actually. I think it's, um, I think it's only, you know, I can't remember. Um, I'll it's fine. <laughs> it's still more than the average, like significantly more. Um, so basically with the stamina as well, he, and with his moveset, obviously he's definitely promoted as a, a ruthless attacker, like non-stop attacking. And, that, and that's the thing, that's the thing, Berserker has very good offense, uh, but you have to learn how to manage to keep the control of the fight, so you are the one applying your superior offense and making sure that you don't allow your enemies to take advantage of your inferior defense and inferior HP and inferior guard. So it's especially in duels, it's about managing this ratio between your offense and enemy offense, and you want to be always as offensive as possible against the opponents. Alright, now I said the good stuff against him, I'm gonna say the bad stuff against him. So first thing that you're gonna notice is that he has uh, lower health. I mean not necessarily first thing, first thing could probably be a reflex card. Second thing would be low health. He has 120 HP, and he has uh, he has Fury that buffs his HP. I mean his defense, but uh, until Fury, he doesn't really have HP, and he doesn't even have a way to heal very well. Like for example, Shaman has low HP, but she can heal herself, and yeah, that, that is a problem. Especially because you have an identity, or you're supposed to have an identity as a trader. But how can you really trade when you're Opponents have more HP, well, you have to be more smart about it, obviously. Um, second thing, as I said, Reflex card. Uh, well, Reflex card, we all know it's bad. <laughs> it's a con he has, you have to learn how to use it, and it's gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass in team fights. that's why I like to prefer to be a bit more agile with him and dodge attack as much as possible, and try to not necessarily rely on my guard as much. Like, I don't, I don't want people, I won't, don't want to be necessarily in range to be having to rely on my guard because a lot of times it's not gonna, it's gonna fail for me. It's not gonna work out because it can drop really easily. And like, let's say one in five heavies or six heavies, you just get hit randomly because your guard fell off. And that happens often. So be careful with it. He has Assassin Renown, which is probably gonna change soon. Like we had a TG announcement uh but still in the game right now so we have to mention it he gets you know the least on anything except uh kills and contesting a point and specifically the most important one is that he only gives five defended renown on uh, on a kill yeah, like on a defended uh, kill which is very important defender renown is a big part of uh of renown gain in high level and a lot of strategy uh, or strategies are based around defended renown so him giving less renown for everyone is a very big deal if you guys can hop off the point quickly um with me, me and me and Hershey will capture it I, I don't think we have to show it though oh no i like to have visual demonstration of things Lost. and then if i just kill um blitz okay you look at look at and you can see, out. yeah. And then if we kill, and if uh, Hershey, you kill Barrett. 20 right 20 right now. So that's and 25 for different. Vanguard, keep in mind. So in theory, you want the Vanguard to always get a last hit. 
if possible. Yeah. All right. Uh, next thing. It's hard for him to finish people off, especially because one thing that you can do against Berserker, and you will notice, like if you pick up Berserker at a high level, you'll notice it will be a big pain in your ass. Is people external dodging away from you, and there's not really much you can do about it. Like, uh, of course. Um, let me let me do it. So usually. The way I would start offense is like, like this. Like right now I'm doing, so no. Block this one and then try to dodge my unblockable. You have to be locked on Blitz. Oh, That's yeah. external dodging. Well, I, I got this one, but usually a lot of the times it whiffs. I bet. See, just like that. And a lot of people, and not, not even that, just try to dodge away from me. Like I'm trying to catch up to you. Like it, it's it's so hard to catch him right now. Maybe if I get a lucky GB, but obviously he doesn't have to spam dodges like that. It's just an example. He's, he has a hard time chasing people. And if you watch high level games, you'll notice that a lot of enemies just, when I play Berserker, just try to external me in teamfights and dodge away. And there was not much I can do because he doesn't have the tools to deal with it. Um, all right. Next thing is he has, as a con, he has the risky playstyle. This character is one of the more inconsistent ones. Uh, for example, he, I said he's a very good anti-ganker, but at the same time, you can also just die in one, two GBs. And since you like to dodge attack a lot and just attack a lot in anti-ganks, it's easy to get a GB from time to time. But he can also win it easily. Like he can die in one second or he can win it easily. So I see it a bit as inconsistent, like this is, for example, compared to someone like Warlord, where I just go in the point, I know I have a lot of HP, I know I have Juggernaut, I know I have Fury, I can survive there. I cannot win it, but I cannot lose it instantly as I do with Berserker. So that's what I mean with inconsistent. Yeah, he's not, he's a high skill, lore character, you have to, you have to yeah, play yeah. him well to get good results. Also wanted to mention that he, in one v ones he might be somewhat easy to play and do well with. In four v four, you have to pick up a little. You have to, you have to actually learn how to play the character. And if you don't, you're gonna be punished easily by the players that know what they're doing. All right. Did you mention the Tetsu feats? Uh, I have not. Okay, so another thing that he has is he has very good feats. Except for his tier 2. And as right now in a meta where fits... Not, not this meta, but always fits matter so much. And the fact that he has like a pretty bad fit on tier 2. Like he has a couple options. He has Doom Banner. Which in theory is okay. But when you take into account that it takes like 3 seconds to place it. Yeah, and it's cool. also static. Uh, I, it's not so well. It's not so good. Yeah, to get the most. Plus, out, people yeah. can just get out as well. Obviously, yeah. you have to put it down before they are in range, and then if you do that, then it's you know they can just avoid it easily. Mm. But if you put it down in the middle of a team fight, it it's, it makes you vulnerable for quite a long time. And of course, bear trap just sometimes might not get triggered. Before. Yeah. Bear trap can catch a lot by surprise. We can obviously have like very good places to put it in. For example, one of my favorites is in mid. Like uh, especially, I call out to my teammates here. I'm gonna place the bear trap, uh, and we're gonna watch out for it. And if a player goes across to it, we have like a couple players going towards it and getting ready to one shot as soon as the bear trap hits. So the bear trap can sometimes get you one shot. Sometimes it can be useless. But uh, it's probably the best option he has right now. And he also has like a feat that gives you passive heal, but it's not really, really that good. It's kind of bad, if you ask me. So yeah, yeah the, that, that... Go ahead. Executioner's Respite is the replacement for his old um, revenge attacks, and it gives yeah. you, what, 15 extra health on... 50%, oh, I think. 50% on everything. 50% on every execution. <laughs> but if you're executing, you're often executing on a point, 
Um, so it's you're going to be healing from that point anyway after the end of a team fight. Yeah. And uh, sometimes you will be executing. I mean, he has got quite a fast execution. I think I've got it set up. 2500 MS. It's the yeah. Balkan time one. But still, that will give you 12 more HP with this tier 2. Like, if, if, like compare this to something like Zan who's passive. You do 40% uh, more damage, you heal 12 more HP on execution. Like, that's horrible. That's so bad compared to any other meta tier, uh, tier 2 right now. Um, so yeah, that's about it for the pros and cons section. Um, moving on. Uh, now I will talk a bit about his playstyles in teamfights, or at least the playstyles I see with him. There are two big ones that, uh, that I try to switch between, depending on the game mode. The first one is being very active and armor trading in teamfights. But thing is, this one is a bit risky and it has a bit of a higher ceiling to do because it is extremely easy to get into bad trades. Uh, one thing that can help you with this is like always doing external attacks. And the reason for it is because if you do an external attack, even if you hit someone, you still have the ability to dodge out of it. And dodge can cancels are very good in. Uh, in this game, because you can hit someone, and when someone else is trying to punish you, you can dodge out of it. Yeah, um, you stay um, yeah. This playstyle is better for 2v2s, like 2v2s, specifically 2v2s, tournament 2v2s. It's good for 2v2s in Dominion as well, but you have to consider other things as well, like for example, is someone else coming in? Do I want to preserve this health? Do I just want to give all to win this team fight? It's, it's a bit, it has a bit more factors. And Obviously, I don't really recommend it in big team fights. That, that can easily get you killed. Especially if, like, the meta right now with Jun Jung, Zan Hu, and all of heavy unblockables coming around the way, it's very easy to get into bad trades. Uh, especially because he doesn't even have, like, significantly more damage than the people he's trading with. Like, it's good to. Let's say a good trade is, like, heavy with a light. But you're not always gonna get that. You're usually gonna get heavy with a zone, heavy with a. Heavy, probably. That's the most common one. You really get heavy with a light. Alright, this is now the second playstyle, the one I kind of play. And the one that uh, I think is better, especially for 3 4 is the Chaser one. This playstyle implies that the Berserker is more passive in teamfights. And he's preservative of his health in order to have better opportunities to chase people fleeing from the fight. Or just rotating. With this playstyle, I usually just try to, you know, suppress an opponent in a team fight. Like I, I said, I'm passive, so I like just stay on the back, and I have one guy that I lock down. I try to suppress him. Like for example, I try to suppress Jun Jung. I don't want to let him do big unblockables on my team, so I just locked on him. If he does something, I can. I have super dodge attack with insane range. I can jump on him. Uh, if not, I stay passive as well. I don't lose health. My team doesn't lose health because I suppressed him. A very powerful team fight, so that's a good way of keeping health and also being active passively in the in a team fight. Uh, and also, since the first thing I mentioned is that he's a very good duelist, especially with this matchup, I will often take opportunities to isolate from the team fight. Like just, for example, in the beginning, I don't want to do the big team fight because I know I'm inferior at this. I know my good abilities are in 1v1s, I know my good abilities are in 1v2s, in 2v2s, but in 4v4s, the more players Berserker has to fight, the harder it gets for him. Like, uh, 4v4 is not his place to be. Uh, so what I do to do this is basically force opponents to take 1v1s or 2v2s with me. Specifically 1v1s. Like for example, as soon as I see opportunity to push, I can push. Just because I forced one guy off me, off the team that is forced to fight me. If I force two, that's good. I have a 1v2, which I can be very good at. And my team has a 3v2. But usually, I, I don't really want to get into 1v2s that often. I usually just want to see if I can catch one guy and separate him and force him to fight me 1v1. Because this way, uh, I take 
Berserk, I took away Berserker from his uh, most inferior environment and put him in his best environment, which is one yards. And if possible, I would also like to take a good team fighter. Like for example, I would love to take John Jung in a one v one because I know I can win it. I have positive match up, and I know he's a way better team fighter. Uh, this can be done by pushing or fa faking a push on enemy point or just fighting off point. Like if if you see, let's say, for example, on Citadel, I a lot of times go on the pff, there's this right or left side uh, spot. Uh, in from mid, like there's this, I don't know, open hallway, I guess, that that uh, I like to, you know, like push push into it, maybe I have a reaction, maybe an opponent tries to defend, well, if he defends, I get into a 1v1, which I like that. So, yeah, this is it for the chaser playstyle. As I said, you want to preserve... For example, from this point, if we were having a big team fight here, I could run up. Uh, out the top to threaten the drop tack, someone would have to follow me to prevent that happening, and then I'm in a 1v1 with them. That kind of thing. Yeah, 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 but in this in this, uh, in this this scenario specifically, I will probably just not chase you. It's yeah. in scenarios like, for example, we're off the point, we're fighting in mid, now I'm pushing this point that you own. You have to stop me, you cannot ignore me. Yeah. While when you went to plunge, I can just ignore you. Yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, Chaser, preserve HP, so you can push. And don't really get into big team fights because you know it's not good for you. This is the thing I recommend. Keep HP and get the best opportunities to push into 1v1s, 1v2s, and whatever you can get. Alright, moving on. I will talk a bit about his duels. Uh, Berserker and duels is very, very simple. Like nothing really, really complicated. A lot of the, a lot of the game is or characters in the game are very, very simple in duels. The true complexity comes in 44, but since it's an important topic, I will cover it as well. So, uh, in duels, you can either you have like first of all the offense. The offense is the most important part that you need to know. You have uh, 400 MS lights and an unblockable. That is your offense. You don't really have much else. I mean, not one unblockable, two unblockables, yeah. So, first, starting with the 400 the second slides, you have... You can either commit to a heavy and have three-directional uh, three light that deals a total of 17 damage if landed. Five damage from the chip and 12 from the light. This uh, is... Change, like, nine damage, actually. It's nine, isn't it? No, it's 12. That's uh, the open the, the the faint lights are eleven. Yeah. And the green lights are nine. Oh, okay. Um, my bad. My bad. Eh? So in this case, it's fourteen damage if landed. Yeah. Apologies. Um. And the second option, the safer route, is to go fainter heavy into a four hundred millisecond light, but this only deals eleven damage. And more importantly, it costs uh, stamina. It costs it, it costs one more faint of stamina. Yeah, that's ten more stamina. So if obviously if you know your opponent is not gonna really block those service, you can let them go for the extra chip damage. It's never bad. And because and it's not just the chip damage, it also gives you the option to heavy heavy, which leads to your unblockable to your 44 damage unblockable. So first thing that you will notice with Berserker after playing him a bit is that people will try to parry your lights. And for this, I, I'm, I'm trying, I want to give you some tips about it, but it's mostly about you adapting to this. And uh, for example, on this specific scenario, is one way to adapt is to just throw heavies from time to time. Like, uh, for, ex for example, is if you know your opponent might parry your chain light after a blocked heavy, not necessarily specifically, but you know that he does from time to time, in order to counteract it, you from time to time, not necessarily on a perfect way, but you can just implement it into your tool set with just heavy heavy. This way, this way you uh, promote him to parry less. 
and if he does bury and you catch him, you do 26 damage and you have the insane option to ch chain into a 44 damage on block one, which OSCs are gone, that's insane. That's very good offense you can have, you have right there. So even if they don't parry, chaining into heavy is very good. So I recommend you to do it like once in four or five times. Maybe even regular, depending on the opponent. But just know that it is something very good in your tool set. Use it and that's it. And that's about it in duels. Like not much else to say here. As I said, they're they're very basic. Now let's try to go into more interesting stuff about Berserker. For example, right now we will talk a bit about his anti-ganking potential. The thing he's maybe known for. So Berserker has a couple of tools to help him anti-gank pretty decently. One of the main ones is uh, the target swap dodge attack. So basically he has, on this dodge attack, he has very good hitbox allowing you to hit multiple people or or just uh, just aiming it to hit people that you're not locked on. For example, you he see here, I am locked onto the Warlord. And while being locked on the Warlord, I try to attack Spaniard. And with this attack, it might seem like a normal dodge attack to Spaniard, but he cannot parry it. Here, try to parry it. It is unparryable. So this way, uh, not everyone is gonna try to parry it. Obviously people know about this, so they'll just block it. But if you block it, block it. I, I do get to start my offense on him, just because I got into this. So this is a really good uh, chain starter, starter, because it allows you to go into offense without being at risk of getting parried. You can be at risk of getting dodge attacked, or dodge bashed or whatever, but you also have the option to attack afterwards with hyper armor. So that is not necessarily the safest option. It might force you into a bad trade, but you have options for options. You can also, uh, one more thing that works a lot is people wait for the indicator to dodge. They don't dodge when I see me dodge. They might try to avoid it by dodging like, like Spaniard will right now. So one thing to counteract this is just doing this. A lot of people dodge when they see the indicator, so I just heavy and faint into GB. Spaniard, it doesn't work on Spaniard because he's dodging on my dodge, yeah, as you can see. <laughs> but if you if you try to react to the indicator and only dodge when you see the indicator, this will hit him. And it hits a lot of people who try to dodge on the indicator, which is pretty much everyone on high level. Or that knows anything about Berserker and how to deal with him. Yeah, just so, pulled out. So, so, as I said, target swap dodge attack, very, very good too. Again, I, I'll explain one more time. How do you perform this move? You have to be locked on someone else and... Oh, no, okay. Let me, let me re re say it. You aim to attack one opponent with your dodge attack and you input it while you are locked to another enemy, uh, preferably far away, so he cannot parry your attack. You have to also be careful. You can do this, but Spanner, come here. I can do the same thing. But since I'm close to Warlord, come closer. He can maybe parry it in one of these attempts. But oh, oh, I think I'm, I'm like it. right behind yeah. me. And then so you have to be careful. Warlord, a lot of good players also do this to bait, like Warlord just will dodge ahead when he thinks I'm gonna dodge attack, and he might get a parry while I'm trying to do it. All right, yeah. as I said, this is a chain starter, but be careful not to get parried. <laughs> yeah, because if you get parried, you can often eat two heavy got No, parried. you eat more, you eat more. You eat 60 to 70 damage, so be careful not to get parried like this. If you get parried once, you almost throw the anti gang Because uh, what will happen is you'll eat at least two heavies. And if the opponents are, are let's say, good at the game, you will eat another heavy because they will do a setup to confirm the fight heavy. So that's 60, 70 plus damage on one parry. Be careful. Blitz, you can kill me and then I can, can, we can demonstrate that quickly. Help one in. Well, I can be careless and get married and die. 
Um, if I may, there's one point that I wanted to bring up regarding that dodge attack where you're kind of clipping the person between you and the person you're locked onto. Um, something to be careful of for newer Berserker players is if the person you're trying to clip with that dodge attack has an all guard, that all guard can still catch that attack and you can still be punished by it, which again could set you up to take 60 to 70 damage. Well, something that Ezra has that other characters don't always no. is he has an off target advanced light. So if you want to, Barrett, you can do a um, target swap yeah. attack. Look, wall full block, full block. Full block, wall of yeah. full block, and try yeah. and it. Yeah, it should go right there. Yeah. So, so this is also a strategy in 2v2, like. Uh, not necessarily in team between teamfights. If you know someone is gonna external block you and he's low, you, or doesn't matter if he's low, you can always just trade with him because even if he, I do this, he can hit me, but I have the option to chain, so I can trade with him. And if I position correctly, which I'm not sure if I will, but I will try, I can maybe even hit him before oh, he hits me. That's very nice. Okay. Works on pretty much every charge except BP if he flips you. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh. It's kind of hard yeah, to Yeah, and that gets the heavy whiff, but I think it'd be better if I was on your opposite side here. And yeah. actually full pop it. Mm. Try one more time, do it. You can always target swap to the... To the um, nah, to I cannot. I cannot right now. Might die. Just... Oh, I got there it. I got go. it before. Yeah. Very nice. As a demonstration of how much damage you can take from one light parry, I will dodge attack blitz and then... Um... Okay, you, you do. No, you're, you're, yeah, you're gonna do it. You have more damage. Ah, I fucked it. <laughs> Let's hit the Marlo. It's fine. Um, Come here, Blitz. Mm -hmm. oh, and that's... that's Three heavies oh. and an unblockable. That, if he has the passive tier 2, it's 39 damage as well. And I also had the potential to get another 11 damage light as well there. So that would have been like, what, fucking, like, or over 80 damage? Like, that, that's so much damage for one light parry. One simple mistake you can make. So really be careful, don't get light parried. Also, don't throw... Okay, this is a bit of a no-brainer, it's not Berserker specific. But don't throw neutral lights neither, because they're not enhanced. And if you if they block it, they can get a free GB. And if they throw it, you're fucked. Uh, all right. Next thing I want to talk about for Berserker in Anti Gang specifically is hyper armor trades in Anti Gangs. They're very attractive to newer players and even even players that have uh, a lot of playtime. But you have to take into consideration that you are in an Anti Gang and your health does uh, value more than enemy health. Uh, you you need to have like. A mentality for this you have to in an anti gank you have to think like i want to s stall it I, I want to survive as long as possible if i kill them that's a bonus but what i need to do is stall so my team can win more and maybe my team can come help me and make a better situation but i don't want to commit to things i don't want to take a risk i just want to play time because the longer i stay on the point the longer i benefit and they lose especially if it's their point <coughs> So, I mean, in terms of the num amount of total health amount in an anti in an anti gank situation, you've got you've got one health bar. They've got two health bars. If you're trading a heavy for a heavy, you're trading, let's say, um, you know, uh, five twenty percent of your health bar for ten percent of their total health. So you need to get you know, a trader. Your your best trades are going to be things like a light for a heavy. Otherwise, you're losing out on damage overall. I'm gonna light. For a heavy, it might be dangerous in certain situations. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, any, any. I mean, the point is, like, you don't want to be going for tr trades where, even where, like, an even trade against one player is actually a losing trade overall in the total amount of health. And in general, Berserker really shines in revenge. Like, you don't want to really go in trades until revenge. But in revenge, you cannot really go in trades. Um, so, in general, you want to preserve your HP so you can get revenge. And with revenge, maybe get it again. But trades, unless they're like super beneficial, don't trade. And be careful trading with unblockable, like top unblockable, because if you let it go, you know, one with you, you are put in recovery that you cannot get out of. So that's very bad. 
Um, right, next topic in 1v2, this is very, very important, so please pay attention, is using tags to your advantage. So, as you know, most people, when they 2v1 you, uh, their job is to kill you before you get revenge. So a lot of the times, once you have a high revenge bar, they're just not gonna give you revenge anymore. So one thing to to adapt to this situation is to just attack the person that tagged you. Because if one player has tagged you and you have revenge, and the other and you know the other doesn't want to give you revenge, you just fight the person that gives you revenge that attacked you already. Because this way, you're already in a one v one that he forces you to be anyway because the other is not gonna t attack you and if the other wants to interrupt this 1v1 with let's say you're winning because you're berserker and you have amazing 1v1 uh he can only do it at the price of giving you revenge so let me give you an example filthy attack me both go both attack me and give me like 90 revenge okay now if I am to fight Spanner because he attacked me, if Warlord attacks me and I block him and I survive it, I'm gonna get revenge. So he's... Okay, that's a reflex guard for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, so if my reflex guard wouldn't have dropped there and I would have blocked the attack or buried it, I would have, have gotten revenge. So during that time, I'm basically forcing... I mean, not forcing. I'm basically... Uh, forcing the fact that he cannot attack me and if he can attack me he's gonna give me revenge which is happy for me if he's not gonna attack me I'm gonna have a 1v1 with his teammate which is happy for me that, that is one of the big reasons Berserker is very good and and you have to be careful to only do this while you have the tag on because let's say I, I, I go nuts I, I know that I have to fight Spanner now but his tag runs out and the world can just hit me and and now he can kill me without giving me revenge, or attack me without giving me revenge. So once you, your the enemy tag has run out and you have absolutely zero attacks, wait for the next tag, and the next person to attack tag you is gonna be your next one v one opponent. So right now it's Warlord. For five seconds I can fight Warlord, assuming I have a lot of revenge. Now Spanner can totally attack me and not care about revenge. Fucking reflex guard. Uh, so. <laughs> Again. Um, so yeah, that, it's very important you take advantage of this. It's ta tags might seem very bad, but you can definitely play around them and uh, force opponents in bad situations. Yeah, and you you have to keep in mind your tags yourself because you can't see your own tags. Uh, yeah, you can't see your own creation of tags. The opponents can see when they will. Uh, they can they have the time of themselves they can see your revenge bar flashing but you can't so you have to be careful especially when you're being aggressive in a 1v1 type type situation in the middle of a two in the two fight you you can be like getting your momentum and then because your opponent's not counter attacking because you're attacking them so much their tag's gonna run out and um and you know your their ally can you know, hit you for a heavy and then you they won't give revenge at that point so you, have to be, you do have to be careful and think about your own tags yourself. I mean, there's, it's unfortunate they can't change how, with with how revenge works, they can't let, there's no way of displaying to the user when you have tags, because it depends on the opponent. Does that make sense? Does that make, if that makes any sense. Um, like, I, I can't know if I'm going to gain revenge unless I, unless I know who hits me, because the tags are based on, they're like relative to the opponent. In, in case you thought that was me just complaining about how tags, I mean, tags is what I don't like, but, but yeah, it's not just, it's not just a complaint, tags are hard to see, it's literally impossible to demonstrate, to show it in a way that's clear, I guess, unless you make your opponent's revenge bars flash as well. Alright, when you get attacked, you have a 5 second timer in your head, uh, you need to keep it in mind, if you don't, you can get hit by surprise and ask where is my revenge when obviously your tag ran out and that's why you didn't get revenge. All right, next thing I'm gonna talk about is the one v one the person attacked. This is a bit more dual tip, but I will try to explain how to use your offense to your full advantage. So the, the high, 
the one common question in, in For Honor is like how to get better at reading. Like for example, how to get better at like throwing the lights, how to get better at guessing what the opponent is gonna do. So the answer is, or at least the way I see it is like learning and knowing how to adapt to your opponents. You have to actively think and try to understand your enemy. And this comes with experience, leave, experience but the best way to improve is to actively think about what you're doing. Like, uh, for example, in, I'm noticing this guy likes to start parrying after I hit him once or twice. I have to adapt to that. I Instead of ignoring it, like I, I cannot let things that I see be ignored. I always have to think what he's gonna do based on previous experiences. I cannot go blind, like for example, going to a chain and just attack Uga Bunga without thinking it. I mean, you can do that, but if you... <coughs> if you get parried, you need to start adapting. You need to start thinking more about what you're doing and how to do it better. And obviously, that this changes to person to person. There's not like one way to do it for everyone but the best way i do it is like to categorize people and try to like for example the way i categorize someone who parries a lot is like i categorize someone that parries a lot and against that guy i will just try to bait him out more on it or someone who parries little but uh he parries in like critical situations but i have to remember that if i don't remember that i might get surprised so just Take all the facts that you know about your opponent and try to make uh, educated guess for the future. Yeah. I mean, it's a hard thing to do and it's especially difficult when you are focusing on what you're doing yourself. So, you have... This is what partly why it comes to experience because you have to be... You have to know what you're going to be... You have to know your character well enough that what you're doing is instinctual so you don't have to be expending conscious thought on thinking okay i'm going to faint my next light into a, my next heavy into a light on the top guard for example or like what am i doing off this guard break if you're focusing on your you focus more on your opponent than than yourself if that makes any sense um and you know a player like barak is, is well past that because he's got played the character for a long time but it's difficult to you have, it does take like a lot of practice to get to the level where you can focus more on read it on like understanding your opponent than understanding your own moveset if that makes any sense now, obviously as i said this is a bit more advanced tutorials so i you should already kind of know your moveset and what to do in and out this is Oops. Sorry. all right so yeah that was it for the anti-gang section next we're gonna talk about his fits so first the the optimal fit uh fit uh, you know setup in my opinion is the bounty hunter for tier one bear trap for tier two uh fury 100 percent on tier three and now for tier four you have flask or fear itself flask is probably better if uh, you can just run it like for example in matchmaking you can just run whatever but in competitive there's a rule called uh, uh, there's a rule that doesn't allow one team to have two duplicate tier force so for example in my situation in my team i have we have a berserker and a Jung, and we both have flask but since we cannot both run it i have to go for the alternative i can go to i can pick fear itself and allow him to pick flask and since Fury and Fury itself are very good fits, both of them, and very similar level, I can, I can let's say, sacrifice a bit for my uh, teammate to win a lot. Because he went from Phalanx, which is a good defensive fit. It's not that bad, but it's not as good as Flask. Flask, in general, offensive fits are better than defensive fits. The reason for it is because uh, if you do get an offensive fit early on, it allows you to keep... Uh, keep the momentum going, keep uh, stopping opponents. While if you get Phalanx early on, I mean, sure, you're gonna survive an extra 10 seconds. I mean, or survive against an enemy Flask, but you already have tier four and nobody else has tier four. So what are you gonna do with Phalanx? With Flask, you know, you get it, you get it early, you can use it early. Yeah, so as an example of the combination of a 
Fury, Fear, it's, uh, fear itself, and um, I actually probably have to wait for my ally to get his flask back just to show the maximum damage potential. Oh, for Fear itself and flask? Yeah, Fear itself and Fury yeah. and flask. I mean, I'm gonna talk about it. I'm like, there's more okay, I right, wanna so say. You don't show it, right. So first of all. Fear itself, why is Fear so good? First of all, Fear is a, a, a feat that very well synergizes with almost every feat in the game because unlike most feats that buff you or deal damage to opponent, this feat debuffs everyone. It debuffs the people in the area. So this buff, this feat doesn't make opponents, doesn't make you do more damage to your opponents it doesn't make you do more damage to your opponents, it makes your whole team do it. Which is, for example, let's say, if Berserker was as good as Fear itself, significantly worse because with Fear itself, you allow everyone to do damage. While with Berserker, assuming that it does give you, and had like pre-buff uh, stats, uh, it does only better damage for you. Are we gonna do pre uh, Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's running out already. Oh. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die anyways. <laughs> doesn't matter though. I mean, it doesn't matter. It one shots. That's it. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Fear also stacks with every offensive fit in the game. Like just as you saw, fear and flask is one, one uh, regular combo that we can do. But be careful. It's a very expensive combo. Like. You don't have to necessarily do it. Flask all already does a lot of damage on itself. Like even Fury Flask sometimes it's a bit overused. Flask on itself is good enough. Fear itself and then oh. shoot with a bow, for example. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that, that's a really good example. Fear and bow, amazing. Go on, go on, show it off. All right. Uh, of course. So his bow normally does 30 damage. Look at yeah, 50 damage. Look how much it did now. 75. 75, so yeah, it's a big, big increase. Does it stack with tier 2? Uh, uh yeah. yeah, it does. But, uh, but you got it on. So yeah, if you, if you had his tier 2, then it, it would be... And it stacks multiplicatively as well, so you could probably get... 90 damage on it, I think, probably. I don't know if you even more, maybe. Um, if, if Blitz did a uh, champion with the winner's advantage, fear and... Um, and Longbow would be ridiculous amount of damage. What it? Because you have to actually hit somebody for winners to manage to activate, right? Yeah, yeah. but it lasts for it. So if you, if you, like, you'd have to hit somebody. Oh, and so then if I just, if I just light, then faint, and then pop Longbow? Yeah, yeah. It should last long enough. Although the old bow is quite slow. Um, sorry for interrupting again. All right, moving on. So we talked about fear. Now we're talking about the really game changer fit, in my opinion, which is Fury. So basically, once you have Fury, you level up. Now you have the chance to push back up and have a significantly better survivability and damage and just overall chance of winning or even or, or stalling very, very long time. So one strategy that I'd like to use with Fury is like when I get it, I just try to save it until I find a very, opportunity, a very good opportunity to push with it. And this way, I just force opponents. I just force opponents to stall and resist me while I'm having 35 damage buff and defense. Am I correct? 35 both defense yeah. and damage. Yeah, which is amazing, and it lasts for 20 seconds. And obviously, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I'll mention it now. Fury and Fury itself they stack together. So one heavy does. 59 damage. One unblockable heavy does 63 damage. Yeah, Which is insane, percent. ladies and gentlemen. It is, you've become a whirling dervish of death. Yeah. Uh, so, a quick question if I could ask. Um, what would be the the uh, perfect opportunity or an opportunity where you would use uh, Fury? Fury? Yeah, because mm. you were saying um, that uh, you were you would save it until the opportunity comes. What would that oh. opportunity look like? I understand. Uh, the opportunity I was thinking about is, for example, I uh, the, the opportunity I was thinking about is I fight in mid, we get advantage, 
now we either all go heal or we there one one thing pushes with fury i have the uh, the possibility to push alone and be very very threatening so the best opportunity i was talking about is to take advantage of people having to rotate to heal use uh playing the chaser playstyle and preserving your hp and then go in with fury against low players and forcing them to all come on you and deal with you which is very hard because you're berserker you can anti gank well and now on top of that you have 35 more damage and 35 more hp 35 more h, h uh, 35 more hp is very 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 good yeah and it also does it affects your ability to get revenge because mm. they hit you whilst you yeah you still the same amount of revenge as it would on a base attack so they can't kill you but they can give you revenge so if with, the, with that amount of damage, what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, you, it's a damn good combo. And um, we, we did do a dojo a couple of weeks ago or with Clutch, actually, who talked about, um, like, good opportunities to push when you want to push your your opponent and opponent's home point. And this this is very relevant for Zerker as well because he's he will often go and push on his own in one of these situations like if if you've won a team fight in mid and two people are, are are low and they are going back to heal that's an opportunity the berserker wants to go and take advantage of because he's quite good at 2v1s and with especially with fury like two people trying to gank a berserker when they have like two bars of health each that is a very favorable situation for berserker if you've got enough health to deal with it so, cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for the um, explanation. No worries. But yeah, um, there'll be, there's a, check out our YouTube channel because we've got the old um, dojos all uploaded there, so you've got to see that. All right. Moving on, the next thing that I want to talk about is fear itself and how risky it is. Uh, as I mentioned before, Berserker is one of the easier heroes to get blown up. And if he really kind of, you know, helps you with that, you know, you have more HP and you have more HP and you also get the same amount of revenge. Uh, but Fear itself doesn't provide any defensive boost. So you have to be careful to not die with Fear itself because Fear itself, first of all, is a very good team fight fit. Don't really use it selfishly. It's way more. It's way more beneficial to use it in a big team fight. Um, but since he's one of the heroes that get blown up, you have to think yourself as more of a supportive hero. You want to, you want to survive. You don't want to die. Since if you die, the uh, the buff just goes away, and your teammates lose minus fifty percent extra damage. So just try to survive. Try to pop fear itself when you know you're gonna leave and not die in the next 20 seconds. So, demonstration, I can pop it and you can hit me in the startup and... Yeah. Oh, actually, well, there we go. Yeah, my bad. It, it, has, a, it has like one second startup. You can definitely hit people out of it. So yeah, just uh, be careful with it. Don't die in stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to talk about? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, that's it for fits. I don't really have anything else to mention. I mean, I have bear trap. Okay, bear trap. So you have to learn where to place the bear trap. And some uh, some ideas I can provide is very good, and very often I, I do it in minions, and I especially stay around it. So if I'm fighting someone and I know gonna get a bear trap i'll try to take advantage of it and as you can see you get a lot a lot of time to do your damage like i had time to dodge forward and then do neutral heavy it gives you 22 seconds so what usually happens is like as i said i have uh, teammates nearby and we all do like our most damaging attacks so we can almost one shot him so that is a very good bear trap placement you just have to just have to catch your opponent in it Another good bear trap placement that I like to use are... So, here's an example. 
Uh, there, there's two that I wanted to say. There's like ones at the entrance of the spawn or hidden in the spawn uh, in the in the point. Like for example, you used to put it into items, but you cannot anymore. But what you can do uh, is put it between random objects. So what I meant first is that you used to put it into items. Like for example, in this staircase, if I placed a bear trap, it would be hidden. But now it isn't. Now we can see it. Uh, Spaniard, come here and place a bear trap. Like look, oh, yeah. looking, looking towards, looking towards, uh, looking towards the stairs. Obviously, he, he doesn't have it. He so doesn't have it. In better room. Okay, well, I'm. I'll put it. So now this this is visible. It used to be hidden, but uh, since I placed it here, I would like to also mention it. Uh, this kind of spots are very good to place bear traps, especially once you are fleeing the fight. Because a lot of people, a lot of times, you will be chased. So putting, like, let's say, this specific spot, you left A because you're low, and put a bear trap here. If someone chases you, you have the upper hand on it, and it's very unlikely they're gonna see this bear trap as well. Other spots I would like to recommend are again into debris or into random objects in the point, like here. If I put it, which I don't have it yet, it will be a bit less hidden, and it's also at close to the entrance of the point. Uh. But you can put it inside put it as well. So, yeah. so if I was standing here, I could put it. Oh, I can do with the doom. See if I can try yeah. with the doom battle. But um, it will go. No, I can. But you can you can put it like inside yeah. the wall. Yeah, that's true. But if, the the best thing is to like put it inside the wall and inside some objects as well. Like for example, this would be the perfect spot right here into this wall. But since it is into the wall, the area that it can hit people in is lower because some of it goes into the wall, almost like half of it. So keep that in mind as well. So basically, entrance of the points around the corners are very good. Or even on the point, like random bear traps here or in the corners are always good. And try to try to force your opponent to go there. Like here, here's a good example. I put this bear trap, which it's not the most obvious one. Like, Yes, you can see it, but look look at it. It's a bit a bit disguised in that debris. Especially if you come here. So Spanner, don't run into it. Come come outside, please. So now that Spanner, go here. Spanner is my enemy. He wants to come onto this point, but I want to defend it. So, but I have this bird trap and I want him to get into it. So one way I could uh, force him to get into it is I, I stand on the other side. So, if he wants to enter the point, he'll have to either go for me, which is hard, or go into the bear trap, which is what I want. Alright, that, that is it that, uh, for what I have to say for Fitz. Moving on, the next thing I want to talk about is his gank. Uh, he has a makeshift gank, as I mentioned, but it is very good to know that uh, it can have a very good performance in teamfights. Like, this gank is not necessarily one to, like, send, you know, like, a full HP backtapper to deal with, but something to do, something to, like, finish off someone in a 2v2 that is already low, this gank works perfectly, perfectly, or let's say Warlord went out of stamina or is far away, me and Blitz can totally sneak up on Spanner and kill him right now. And, and it, that heavy wasn't confirmed, but I have another thing to do if he doesn't heavy in time, I can also do this 400 ms lie to confirm the heavy. So, for example, delay your heavy. Ah, it didn't work this time. But I, yeah, I thought it counter guard break. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, if you don't counter guard break, that's actually one of the. Um... I just messed up that parry up, but yeah. Also, I would like to mention. Uh, let's kill him. There's also a way to get a follow up light to be the full nine damage. I'm not sure how it works, but sometimes it just is. So yeah, first of all, yeah. just just so it's clear for everyone, the setup is the following: teammate, which is in this situation Blitz, guard breaks an opponent, and the berserker gets a free zone attack, which I remind you is uh, full damage. It doesn't get any damage reduction. The no no not not even the first hit. Really? Oh, Three, please. Four damage. Oh, yeah. All of that. Right. Um, 
So the zone attack is guaranteed on the damage on the GB with no damage reduction, and its hit stun gives enough time for your teammate to get a free heavy or a free most damaging attack. Like for example, you could do other setups. It doesn't have to be a heavy. A good example could be Berserker Shogun Kikak. One GB into zone, and instead of him heavying, he's gonna hug, so he can start his own gank. So this way we. Uh, combo two ganks with each other. We mix them. We use both Shugoki and Berserker's gang. I mean, or another yeah. example would be like Lobbringer's long arm if it was as it used to be in the past, or Highlander's uh, let's say grab to grab him on the ground so we can both heavy afterwards. Uh, obviously, not all of them are as good as Shugoki's, but uh, some of them have the potential to. Uh, confirm way more damage. Like for example, there used to be this one shot with Lowbringer and Berserker where Berserker GB for his zone and Lowbringer long armed and if you hit people in while they were long armed, you would interrupt them so you just while they were getting long armed you would just time attacks and you would both one shot together. Yeah so if um like it doesn't you also don't always have to confirm the zone so if Blitz if you come and stand out here mm -hmm. and then Warlord you go over in the corner. Um it ha uh yeah so basically, be prepared, prepared to charge him. Uh, you know, it has extremely long block stun. Even if Blitz blocks it, it's going to block no. stun for a long time. Which <clears throat> can confirm. So you don't yeah. need to guard pick for the zone in order to confirm a hug. Mm. You can just throw the zone and it will. Yeah. Get. If they parry it, it confirms the. If it confirms the hug, and if they don't, it confirms the hug. So here, here's what a spanner is saying, so we, we can say it as well. Come here, uh, no, let's bash of bash of this uh, zone. Filthy, sp uh, block it. How do so, you want me to punish? No, just bash it. No, I see. Ah, okay, please block it. All right, so assuming that Zanhu's bash was the hug, of my blocked son, he was able to get into get a free hug, which leads into Shigunki's gang infinite. Yeah. All right. You gotta be careful the zone that you use it in a position that you that you don't space in a position that's uh, you know gonna hit your ally. So if a uh, blitz, um, if my ward comes near blitz and guard breaks me, um, Hershey, if you can guard break blitz for me. Oh, actually, that, that actually that was fine. But sometimes I can hit my warlord with it, and then that will prevent. Usually, when I don't counter guard break. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if you don't counter guard break, you just yeah, you guaranteed to hit both of them. So. Um. Oh, I guess there's one other tip. I think we, we talked a bit about chase. I don't think we mentioned how you can. I mean, it's in this move set, but the four dodge heavy goes a very long way, and you can. And you can cancel the wisp recovery into an another dodge and just carry on going. Yeah. Sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. But usually this one you like you have to have eyes, as I said, you're the chaser, so you have to eyes have eyes on the low HP person once he tries to run away. That was your cue to run away. Oh sorry. You can do it, and a lot of times it will crack. But <laughs> if he if he's already running away from you, sometimes it might just hit. But sometimes it might just hit. <laughs> so you know, is it also you can't faint it normally, but if you're in the running like the running yeah. animation of it, you can faint it. I can I can so. show it as well. So yeah. right now, I am. Wait. I have to basically I, have to be like... I, I just did it. So right now I'm running with my axis crossed, but then I can side. I'm trying to demonstrate it on my end. Um... Lock on Blitz. He's far away. Yeah. Or lock on me. Okay. You back? Oh wow, okay. It just, it just went. Oh my god, I am terrible today. There we go. Wait for more distance. There we go. That's me fainting it. But yeah, oh. it would be nice if uh, it actually went. If you could faint it properly, but you could really faint it. 
Obviously, uh, oh, very important to mention, you said about chase. One thing that is very good to know is that you cannot really roll from Berserker, because even even if you roll for me, like, let me give you an example, I can I can, I can can still catch. So for example, I will do a light into unblockable and you're gonna try to roll unblockable because you're 1 HP and you're very, very afraid. But even if I let it go, I can still catch it. Because on whiffed, I can cancel recoveries. Or even, let's say, if you roll it and I faint into light, I can still catch it. Like, I, I can almost always catch it. Like, no matter what, I'm gonna catch it. Even, even if you roll this heavy, <laughs> even if you roll this heavy, I can catch it. Like, no matter what. So, Berserker Light has very, very good range. If you want even more range on it, delay it a bit. So... Instead of buffering like this and giving you the most range, delay it a bit more so you use the distance that the dodge gives you for the extra time uh, you are in it to have more range, like this. Like, let me show you buffered versus range. This is buffered and this is delayed. It was it went a bit further. Yep. Um. What else is there to mention? So, so basically because he has this sword attack, if you're trying to flee away from Berserker, you literally cannot, because you're always at risk of just getting dodge attack. So you have to keep unlocking and locking back on to uh, make sure you don't get dodge attack, which means they cannot run. You did your job, you are not allowing them to flee. If, uh, if they flee and they don't lock on back, you can dodge attack for free. But usually, a lot of times, people will just do this. Just wait for the dodge attack. So you have to make a read on it. And one thing that you can do against it is like, if you do make a good read on it, I'm gonna run, punish me. Not with that. With the that one. I, if I parry it, I can run. But then again, you can do dodge heavy on me. But I can also parry that and run again. But still, it's very, I'm making it. Berserk is making it very hard on me to allow me to run. And here, th this is a perfect example. Uh, try to roll my dodge heavy. Spanner. I, I get a free dodge light if you roll my dodge heavy while I'm chasing. So unlock and run away. That's a free light. I mean, there it wasn't because he dodged early. Here he dodged too early that I caught him. But I know you can dodge not too early. Yeah. And I get the light. Yeah, uh, there are often people. A lot of players better than me, so. As you can see, I, I managed to fail a lot of demonstration stuff as well as even when I'm told exactly what I need to do. <laughs> uh, uh, is there anything else, or have we. Can I get over? <laughs> that, that, that is it for all I prepared. Now we can go to the question section. If you have anything you want to ask me, now is the time. It's time. I'll only check the chats to see if there's anything that's been written down. Um, does the heavy after zone feed any revenge? If it's your opponent's heavy that's landed, uh, it's your allies' heavy that landed on your zone, then yes, it will feed revenge because your zone will tag them. That's the impression I've had so far. Options from the recovery council. Okay, so after you throw a heavy, as long as it whiffs, or yeah, you can hit an external opponent. Um, actually, any attack you can cancel into a dodge attack, into a dodge, or you can cancel into a zone. Um. So one thing I mentioned, and I can explain it a bit more now. Come here, Spanner. I said if you want to trade in team fights, always do it unlocked because even if the heavy lands, I can, I can uh, dodge out of it. So I always want to be unlocked when I trade. Also another good tip I can mention, that just came to my head because I did it, is uh, you have good delay window on your dodge attack, I can delay it. So this is the buffered, and this is the delayed. There's so much delay on it. So basically what this means is like, just like that when I dodged, but I dodged a bit too early, I delayed my dodge attack to the maximum to get extra iframes. So it's very important to know how to do this. Alright, uh, questions? When to use which 
which recovery cancel. Well, obviously, dodge is great for avoiding things. And the zone is good for... If, if somebody tries to punish your whiff, if you whiff a finisher, and they, they try and punish it with a guard break, you can zone off them, zone attack oh. them, and that will hit them out of there. Um, I think it's quite dangerous to use the zone cancel in in gank situations, if you're being ganked, because it puts you in quite a long animation that your opponents can just get you with a heavy, right? Yeah. Um, so if, I, if I, like, you know, whiff an attack and then zone, I'm stuck doing that for a second and a half, so that's a tough opportunity to land a big heavy on me. Um, and I don't think you could... Can you cancel after a zone? If you have to whiff a zone, can you... No. Okay. So you can only cancel your normal. You cannot attack. cancel after zone or after uh, dodge attack, which I hope uh, oh, gets changed. Attack. Very yeah. nice. You can do it after everything, just like uh, every other character with dodge cancels. All right. Any other questions? Uh, after the CC nerf, who are you gonna use for comp? Uh, I'm. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I cannot. I cannot say right now. Maybe Vader, maybe Berserker, maybe Orochi, depending on what's good. Yeah, it's too early to say, right? Yeah. Gonna change a lot. I want to play Berserker, but if I cannot, I will not play him. Uh, yeah. I guess that is probably all that. What we could do, uh, oh, the back zone. Just don't, just don't use the back zone. It's just, yeah. it's just. I mean, yeah. Sometimes you can use it as an option select if you don't want to just get blocked and parry. Yeah, but then even, like, even then you don't get the punish if you parry. So it's still bad. yeah, but they can then just. Maybe like, you, depending on character. And do so much things. Like, for example, well, we can delay bash, and I cannot do anything about it. Yeah. Do, then I tried to bounce. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, um. What else? Uh, just people talking about option select stuff. It's been trying to enter gank without option select. Well, I mean, at least with Berserker, you don't really want to be used. Berserker will have a couple of extra option selects yeah. that aren't gone. So, I mean, we refer to as option selects, but aren't in the same way. So you can parry on like. Berserk can dodge cancel his heavies, yeah. so you can parry on light timing and also deflect to heavy. I can never say that as well. The, 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 okay. So, Warlord, give me, listen to me, give, give me side light uh, or side heavy. You have to mix me up. All right. A bit bad at it, but basically, what we have to do is input the parry in the first 100 ms, and then you can option select both light and heavy. And it all only works if there is a 400 ms window between the light and the heavy. Yeah, uh, so let, let, me, let me try to do it again, I'll, I'll do it more consistent this time. Well, on trial, yeah, I've got to think like heavy is a bit better in the window. Uh, I, I cannot also, do it on you, I cannot do it on you. It doesn't have no, I'm gonna do it on one. I'm, I'm curious about the Warlord heavy timing now, uh, with it being side and you saying that there had to be that 100 ms there, because his lights are... They're 500, I mean, heavy is 900, there has to be a 400 ms delay between it. But Zerker's uh, yeah, lights are 500, his heavy is 800, there's a 300 ms delay between. My top line. Man, I, I'm failing at it too hard, let, let me do it one more time. Uh, okay. Nice. 
That has got to be by far one of the most stylish reads. Seriously. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's an option select for both. It's yeah, exactly. Let's. And you do you put input all the same like the heavy into dodge. Yeah. Like that's the input you want to put both at the same time. Also, yeah. pro tip, when, when you paint with dodge, uh, you don't lose stamina. So you can do that to save yourself stamina. If you oh, prefer. Yeah, fine. Nice. Also, another good tip is to do this. So on GB, you cannot really do things, like for example, uh, to avoid getting punished. What you can do are two things. So. Try to punish me on GB, Warlord. Oh, sorry. I can either light and hope I have enough time to get into Eye Primer, which I most of the times don't. I had this time. Or you can do this. And this is might be a bit better. You can heavy into dodge. So for example, in this specific scenario where I saw he would uh he would heavy me, what I would do, I get a GB. Here he came in. I would dodge. Yeah. I can even dodge into defense. But you, but you have that to is, be so really careful and good at it. Because I have to do it on reaction to him attacking me. Yeah. Mm, I didn't have enough time. So in that scenario, I, was, I buffered it. He attacked early, so I couldn't do anything about it. The light wouldn't have hit anyway, so there was basically nothing to do. Don't get GBs in team fights; it doesn't. It's not worth it. You will get hit out of it. Yeah. Um, but in case you do, this is a thing to do about it. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's quite well. On quite a lot, on quite a long time, probably longer than I thought we we would actually talk about just talking. Um, if we want, we could set up a pause. Um, the four scrim we have people playing Berserker, and then you can we can spectate them, and you can critique after like that. Oh, uh, I, I don't oh, know. Uh, I have go to go on. as well. I have to do other things too. But no uh, I was happy. I was it was I was happy to be here. I enjoyed yeah, that. Thank you very much for coming. Anyway, right. Scott. Okay. Well, in that case, what we can do, um, we can still do that, and Barrack will just head off. Um, yeah. Just, Busy man. Um, if you have any any interesting clips, in my opinion, on, I can obviously help. But I, I don't have the time to watch like hours of Tuesday. game sessions. Berserk, if anybody's down for some Tuesdays. Some Zerk. Was that All right. it, sorry? I'll play some Tuesdays with Zerk, if anybody's down for some Tuesdays. Yeah, that's, I think that'd be a good idea rather than force rather than Grimm and Tuesdays. No. About Grimm's and Tuesdays. Yeah, that's it for me though. So, it was very nice sure. to be here. Thank you for Thanks having so me. Oh, no, no, good good luck. Good luck in the skins as well. See you, Derek. Yeah. Alright, bye bye everyone. Big Thank fan. you. Bye. Bye boys.